require any interaction from the user side. So that is basically what we call, uh, what we use functional components for. And then we add something called a class component, which is what we use for all the dynamic stuff. So basically where the user could click and manipulate values, uh, getting user data from form fields, all of those things were done with the help of something called class components. Then later on, a couple of years into, you know, having these two different components, developers created, so open source community, right, developers came up with certain um, improvements to the functional components. And there came a point where the functional components became so common, so popular that React, the team at React eventually decided to drop class components, right? So as of today, the latest version of React that we are discussing the recommendation from the team is that we should not be using class components at all. Instead, all the additional functionality that class components could do, right, which is why they were two different components, have now been incorporated into functional components with the help of this hooks. Okay. So basically everything that we need for dynamic interaction, all the setup that we require for user interaction, all of that has been incorporated into functional components itself using the idea of hooks. Okay. So there are a bunch of different hooks. Like I said, there are about 12 to 15 different hooks. And there is also a provision within which we can create our own hook. Okay. So we can also create custom hooks if required. Right. So essentially hooks, like the name suggests, are additional functionalities or additional uh, logic, additional capability that have been added to the functional components to make them better, to improve them so that we don't really require class components at the end of the day. Anything and everything that we want can be made with the help of functional components plus hooks. Okay. So this is basically what hooks are. Again, very simple. Hooks are a mechanism in React using which we can add certain additional capabilities to our existing React components. So far, what we have discussed are only functional components. We have not talked about class components at all, because like I said, the latest guideline, the latest recommendation from the React team suggests that we should not be using class components. Even though the support for class components is still there, that they are still continued because again, existing projects should not stop working. So even though the latest version does support class components, it is recommended that we use functional components because they will likely remove the support in a later version. Okay, so in a later version, the idea or the plan is to remove support for class components and only keep functional components in the longer run. Right? Yes. So Arjun, the issue that you're facing is basically because you will have to install another, you'll have to write another command called npm install create react app. So I'll just type it in the chat. You please check this out and run this command. So typically what happens is when we install npm, in some cases, the create react app command does not come to install with npm. So what you can do is I've just pasted this command in the chat. Please take a minute, run this command in the terminal, and then you should be able to run your npx command, right? So yes, that uh, should hopefully solve your problem. Okay, perfect. So what I have done for today's session is I have two simple screenshots. Like I said, we'll be discussing two hooks. The first hook is called the use state hook. And then there's something called the use effect hook. Okay. And to understand these hooks, we'll create something very simple, something like what you see on the screen. Okay. So for the use state hook, we are going to create a calculator or a, um, you know, like a counter kind of an application. This will help us understand a lot of different things. The first thing, the first thing that we'll understand is how to attach events to a React component, right? So just like we have seen attaching event handlers in JavaScript, we'll also discuss how to do this within React. So we have to detect button clicks. We have to make modifications, right? And then we'll also understand how to modify the value of something on the screen using React. Okay. So for holding this value within the application, within the component, we are going to use a hook. Right. So this is the output that we are expecting to create first for the first hook. And then there's something else that we will discuss for the next hook or the second hook. 
right so let's get to the code and get started let me just share the entire screen so that you can see vs code and we can begin right so again this is the default application that we have the output is over here as you can see the output is also running and then i have created this application called react hooks i have not modified any file over here everything that comes with the default react application is available over here right what we will do is we will modify the existing app component to create our own thing so i'll just delete everything that is there in the app component and we'll just modify this to create our own um, you know our own component and we'll just work with this so what we want on the screen is this output that i have just shown you which is here so we want basically some heading over here then there are four buttons so we have increment decrement reset and add so increment would increase the value by one decrement will reduce the val value by one reset will change it back to zero and then add whatever value we get from the user over here we want to add that to our counter right so this is what we want to work with so let's go ahead and quickly set this up we already know how a function component looks like this is the structure right function component name then within return we specify all the html and all the logic we will write over here right so the logic will come here first let's quickly set up the output and then we'll work on the logic okay so i'll put one heading over here this will store our value i'll keep it zero to begin with right then the second thing that we have are four buttons of course i will not spend a lot of time on the css part i will just create the simple html style for now and you already know how to work with the css so we have let's change it to increment this is going to be decrement right this is decrement then the third button the the third thing that we need here of course is going to be reset and then we have the form field in the next line so let's put a line break this takes it to the next line then we have our input field so input type equal to number okay and then we want to read this data so that will be another button which is add right so this is what we have in terms of the output let's quickly check our output as well this is the expected output we have one number which stores the current count and there are four buttons increment decrement reset and add and then there is this one input field so in our output also you can see we have achieved this similar setup now okay i will not be styling the css part you can do that on your own we already have a file called index.css as you might already know there is app.css index.css you can put the style in any one of these and it will work fine okay our focus today is the logic so let's do this step by step the first thing that we want to do is of course just like in javascript what we do is we create a variable to store the value within the script in the exact same way when we do this with react or when we do this with a function component we have to use something called use state so we'll import use state from react this is the hook that we want to use and this is how we import it we specify the value in curly brackets right we specify the value in curly brackets so we are saying import this hook from react now what do we want this hook for well this hook will number one let us create a variable so create a state the reason the use the the reason the hook is called use state is because the variable that we create the variable that we create in react for a specific component is called a state okay so what we want is we can say const again the syntax is going to be slightly different over here right this is the syntax so we say const then we give the name of the variable so let's say this is counter then we give the name of a function which will be used to modify this value and then we say is equal to use state along with the default value okay so this is a different syntax let me explain this to you once again so what is happening over here is we are going to use this hook called use state as you can see returns a stateful value and a function to update it so for this we need to create two names or two values here the first variable counter this is going to be the value of the variable or the state which will store the actual counter that is zero right now right 
Then the second thing that we specify over here is a function that we're going to use to modify this state variable. Then we specify the hook and then we give the initial value over here. So initially we want the counter to be zero. We want it to start from zero. And then as and when we make changes to it, we will use the set counter function to make those changes, right? So how this works is very simple, right? This is the setup. Now, the first thing that we want to do is to display the current value on the screen. For this, we can just replace this with counter like this, right? So what we are doing here is, this is very important. We are embedding JavaScript within HTML. Right. Again, uh, so Subraja, the purpose of use state is to initialize the variable. Right now, we are saying initialize the value with zero. So this use state is basically working like a constructor. This is going to create the stateful variable for us. And this variable will then be available throughout the entire component. Again, if we just consider a function component like it was a few years ago, we did not have any ability or capability for a function component to create variables, right? It was all going to be static data. So we could not have variables in a function component. Within this use state or using this use state, we are actually creating a variable. So this counter here is a variable just like a normal JavaScript variable. We call this a state variable. Right. So this is called a state variable, which means this value will be available throughout the application or throughout the time when this component is on the screen. So as long as this component is being rendered on the screen, this counter variable will be available. Okay. So we call it use state and it's called a state variable. Okay. So again, I, I've been explaining this from scratch itself, right? Navya, I took told you the history of hooks. I told you why hooks came up because there were two different types of components earlier. We had something called functional components and something called class components. Functional components were initially supposed to be static or read only. So there was no modification, no dynamics, no variables that function components could have. And class components were supposed to do all the logic part. But then with time, people realized and developers, the open source community came up to create these hooks. The whole point of hooks is to reduce the use of class components or rather eliminate the use of class components such that function components themselves can perform all kinds of tasks, right? So effectively, that is what a hook is. It provides additional functionality to a function component so that we don't really need to use a class component, right? So now what we're doing here is we are exploring the first hook, which is called the use state hook, right? So use state basically is going to be a hook, which helps us create variables within function components, right? Use state is a hook, which helps us create variables within function components. Uh, yes. Now you should give the file name here. I think, uh, who was this? This is Rupa. Rupa, after you write the npx create react app, put another space and give the folder name. That is the actual command to create the application. So basically, uh, so what you will do is you write npx create react app and then follow this with the app name. This is going to be your entire command. And once you hit enter after this, the React application should get created. It will take three to five minutes depending on your system, right? So yes, that uh, that should be the next step. Coming back to the point. So yes, like I was telling you, the use state hook basically lets us So in this case, the counter in a real application, you might need multiple things, right? For example, here also later on, when we work on the input part, we will create one more value and one more variable, which is going to store that input value, which we get from the user. So we'll create that as well later on. For now, what we have done is we have used this syntax of use state to create a variable, which is called counter. Okay. The variable is called counter. Now, 
what this counter contains in addition to the variable name is a function or a method which we are going to use to update or modify this value. Okay, we are going to use this counter to update this set counter to update or modify the value. And the syntax is such that the current value is zero. So this is how we specify the initial value. What should be the starting value of the variable, right? If we were to do this in JavaScript, we would simply say something like let counter equal to zero. Right? In JavaScript, we would just make it like this. In React, we are doing the exact same thing. The only difference is we have to do it with the help of a hook called use state. Okay. Everything clear so far? Yes, no, understood. You can put something in the chat just so that I know everything is clear. Okay, perfect. Now the next step that we have over here is to work with this counter, right? So the very first thing that we want the counter to do is to just, we want to display the counter over here inside the H1, right? So what we can do is we can remove the zero from there, use curly brackets and put counter over there. So this will get the current value of counter, right? The current value of counter, which means whenever we click any button, make any changes, the value of counter will be modified. So that modified value will be shown over here. It will show the current value of counter. Okay. So that's the setup that we have over here. Again, this is where we are putting JavaScript within HTML. Remember when we attach a script to our HTML, we are putting JavaScript. Uh, we have the file as HTML file and then we add JavaScript to it. But here the file is JavaScript, right? The file is a dot js dot javascript file and this is called jsx right like we also discussed in the previous session this is called javascript expressions jsx javascript expressions so what we can do is we can use this dynamic code uh, okay let me just check why the voice is breaking just give me a minute Right. Yes. So hopefully the voice is better now and my Wi-Fi is also back. So hopefully you should be able to hear me clearly now. Right. And uh, yes. So let's continue where we were. Like I was telling you, we have created this piece of code. Right? Again, let me know in the chat if this is working fine. Yeah. Yes. So what we have done so far is we have created one variable called state. Right? And then this variable is basically what we have displayed over here. So if we just check our output right now, you will see this still shows us zero. It does not give us any error. It does not give us any issues. So this means the variable is showing up properly, right? Which, which means our creation of the state so far is perfect. Now, the next thing that we can do is we can use this function, the set counter function to modify this value however we want, right? So for example, in the increment case, what we want is we just want the value of the counter to be incremented by one. So what we can do is just like we attach events right in JavaScript. Remember how we do this with the help of on click. So in the exact same way, we can do the same thing over here as well. What we can do is we can say on click and on click. What we want is set counter counter plus one. So what this will do is this will take the current value of the counter and increase it by one. That's it. This is our increment functionality, right? So you can see here, this says too many re-renders. React limits the renders to prevent an infinite loop. Let me just reload it. 
and the error will still be there. The output is not getting displayed, right? This is because this is a very common mistake. When we put something directly in on click, it will render the component an infinite number of times. So instead, what we will do is we will create a method over here and then we will call that method every time something uh, changes, for example. So what we will do is we'll create a function. Let's call it const or we can make a normal function like this. And let's say function increment counter. This is the function that we are creating. And then we will simply pass this over here. Okay, that's it. All I have done is I have just created another function called increment counter. And that is what I'm going to call over here. Now, if we check the output is back, there are no further errors. And if I click on the increment button, you will see it starts working. Okay. So this is a very common uh, mistake that a lot of people make. Whenever we put anything in on click, we should either put it using an arrow function, something like this, or we can extract the logic out. This is a recommended way. Extract the logic out to a simpler function and call that function instead. Right. So again, instead of using a function, we can also say const, um, you know, we can use the arrow syntax also. So we can do it like this as well. Either way, it will work fine. So we can either use the arrow syntax or use the normal function syntax, uh, whatever it is. Yes, Arjun, counter, you can call it whatever you want. It's a variable. So you can change this to whatever name you want. The only thing is we usually put the same name. So if we call it, let's say, you know, um, my value, for example, then we typically set this to set my value. That's the only convention that you need to follow. Whatever name you give over here, the same name should be used over here. Again, this is a convention. It is not a mandate. You can use whatever names we want. But of course, to make the code more meaningful and more uh, understandable, we put the same name over here, right? So counter and set counter, right? Perfect. Now, just like we have created this counter, what we can do is we can create another copy paste, like another copy of this for decrement. So what we can say is we can say decrement, decrement counter, and this will be counter equal to counter minus one, simple. Then on the decrement button, we can put another on click and we can call this decrement counter. So now both our buttons should start working. You can see decrement reduces the value by one. So if I call this at zero, it goes negative and increment will increment the value by one, as you can see, right? So this is how we can attach event listeners or event handlers in React. We write the logic first and then we put that function call over here. Yes. So Harsha, the reason why we're using use state is that whenever set state is called, whenever this set function is called, it is going to re-render the component. So every time we click this button, it is going to re-render the value, the updated value, wherever counter is written. So it's going to update the value of counter, re-render it every time the state changes, right? So by default, the state is zero. When we click on this button, the state changes to one. As soon as there is a change in the state, all places where we have used that state variable counter in this case will be re-rendered. So the latest value shows up on the screen, right? If we directly put set counter over here, then what happens is we are basically calling it even before the button click. Okay. If we directly put a function over here like this with brackets, then this will call the function every time the page loads, even before our button click. You can see as soon as I add those two brackets, it says too many re-renders, right? So the reason for that is when we call a function like this, it is going to be called every time, even without the button click. So we remove the brackets, we remove the function call brackets and just write the name of the function. This means the function will be only called, um, right? When we work with, uh, so in this case, right? The function will only be called uh, when we are talking about clicking, only when the state will change. I think at this point, I will have to restart the application. Let me just quickly do that because we reached that too many renders part. So sometimes the application will stop running, right? Another thing to remember, right? When you're working with this, uh, right? There we go. The application is now running and we are back to our output and both the buttons are working. Increment adds the value, decrement removes the value 
like by one. Now, uh, the next thing that we have to be very careful with, let's work on the next logic, which is a reset. So again, I will copy this and I will change it to reset counter. This is a quick challenge for you. Tell me what value should come over here within set counter when we are working with reset. So basically we wanted to go back to its initial value. So which value should we put inside reset? Perfect. We'll put zero and set counter back to zero. So no matter what the current value of the counter is, we want it to go back to zero when the reset button is clicked. And that is exactly what we want. So let's call this reset counter over here. So again, on click, we'll just call reset counter. So now three buttons should start working. Reset, as you can see, takes it to zero. So let's see, let's say we are currently on minus five, minus six, and I click on reset. You can see it immediately goes back to zero, right? Perfect. So this is our logic for reset. So we have created three different handlers. One is incrementing the counter. The second thing is decrementing the counter. The third thing is resetting the counter. Now let's move to the next part. Over here, what we want is we want to read the input value. We want to read the value coming from this input. And then we want to add that when the add button is clicked. Over here, we will realize that, that we need one more variable for this to work, which is where we want to store the input value, right? So to store that, let's create another state. Let's call it input value input value and then this will of course be set input value okay so we'll create the function again the set function and we'll again call use state by default we can say use state as zero by default we are putting use state as zero of course the initial value that the user will see in the form is going to be zero right then what we want is whenever there is any change in the form field whenever there is any change in the form field we want to update the input value, right? We want to set the input value. So let's create this. Let's call it handle input chain. This is a function, right? That we are creating. And what we want to do here is we want to set the input value to whatever value comes over here. So let's give it value. So we'll set it like this. Now this value is going to be a parameter that this function needs. So every time there is a change in the value, we have to pass this value as an input to the function and that value will be set, right? Perfect. Now what we want to do is inside the form field, we have to attach an event called on change. Whenever the input changes, we want to update the input value. We want to set the input value. So we want to call this handle input change. But what we also want to do is pass the current value. So for this, we can use e dot target dot value. Okay. This is a different syntax. Again, this is how we handle forms as well. So e refers to the current event that was triggered, which is on change. E dot target talks about or points to the element that triggered the event. And then e dot target dot value is the current value of that element. So Whenever we change anything in this input field, we are basically passing the new value, the updated value to e dot target dot value uh, through e dot target dot value to handle input change. This is in turn changing the input value to the latest value. Now there are two more things that we need to do. First of all, the value that the user sees here should be input value because whenever it is modified, it will not be visible otherwise. Let me show you what happens if this line does not exist, right? So even if we modify the value, you will see here, right? Even if I type something, this is currently visible, but it will still not update the counter properly simply because the current value is not set to input value. So this is the first thing that we need to change, right? Now let's add the logic for the add button. So let's say const add input value. Okay, this is going to be another function that we are creating. And then we can say set counter again. And this time what we want is counter plus input value. So take the current input value, take the current counter and add them. That's what we want this to do. And then on click of the add button, we are going to specify this. So we can say on click add input value. 
right so we've written a lot of logic as you can see the logic is pretty simple over here but we have created a lot of functions so we have created two state variables then we have created one two three four five different functions right for all of this to work so let's take a look at the output now if i click on add you can see it does zero one two three and if i add this again this is the problem it is not really adding it as a number but instead it, it is adding it as a string the reason for this is because the input by default gives us a string okay so this e dot target dot value will be a string it will not be a number how do we change this well we can make this a number like so we can wrap this up in number and this should hopefully fix that problem for us let's re reset this and let's say we add 100 and add now you will see this adds 100. If I click again, it adds another 100 to it. Click 100, it adds another 300 to it. And that is how it works. So now everything is working fine. You can see increment, decrement, reset, add. All our buttons are working fine. One final thing that we want to do here is to set this to zero. Okay, after we click on the add button, the input field here should set back to zero. So any idea on how we can do this? What should we add in the code in order to make that change? Perfect. What we can set is we can set input value. So that, that will be uh, right. after we do add input value, we can call set input value and we can change it to zero. Remember, we cannot directly modify input value. It is a state. We cannot just say input value equal to zero. It will not work because this is not a local variable. It is a state variable. So the only way you can see this gives us an error also. It says input value is constant. So the only way to modify this is to actually say set input value zero. We cannot say input value equal to zero. So for people in the chat who are putting this up, input value equal to zero will not work. The function we have available for that is set input value, right? We have created that over here. That is how we are modifying it earlier also, right? So after we update the counter, we are setting it back to zero. Let's check this out. So I'll click on add and you can see 100 gets added and this is reset to zero. Let's add something else here and then it automatically resets to zero, right? Perfect. So this is the first application and it is working fine now, as you can see, right? So we have created some thing with the help of the use state hook as you can see and this is working perfectly fine now so again we have so many different variables we have two variables and for those two variables we have different functions there are five functions and this is the entire output logic so you can see this is our application and it's a very good way uh, to understand something like use state right so whatever we do now everything is working perfectly fine as you can see, all buttons work. And again, we can just add whatever we want and it will work fine. So all buttons are working fine. This is the first hook that we have discussed. It is called the use state hook. Okay. So again, the use state hook is used to keep a track of all the data within the component. Typically, we have a bunch of different data pieces. So we might need more than one state. But if you are working with an array or a data structure, then you might use only one use state to keep everything. Either way, the point is use state helps us create state variables and we have to create a corresponding function with it. That function is the only way to update the values, right? So I hope this is clear um, to you, right? Let me know if there are any questions about this first before we move to the next hook. So I'll wait for a minute. I'll just see if there are any questions on this in the chat. And if there are any questions, let me quickly answer them. I'll also check this on YouTube live as well. If there are any questions uh, on this and otherwise, if there are no questions, then we'll continue. So if there are no questions, you can just put no clear something in the chat so that I know there are no questions. And uh, yes, I'll quickly also check the YouTube chat as well. Again, so uh, Sheikh Salim, right? Assignment links are available in the repository. Please take it from there. Um, I can't really give you link every time. 
everything is in the repository. Please take it from there. Right. So yes, I am also uh, on the YouTube chat now and no further questions there as well. Okay. Uh, uh, I will check it and I did update session 15 as well. If I just check. Uh, session 15 is here, right? Session 15 is available. The code inside it is also available. As you can see, right? The code is also here. And I think the URL is also there. Yes, the recording link is also here. I'll just double check once. But yeah, I have updated it as you can see uh, over here. But again, I'll just double check this after the session as well. Just in case there is something missing over there. And uh, okay, counter creation, sure. And input change. Okay, so let's take a look at this. So input change basically requires two things, right? The first thing is we have to use this on change event. So on change will be called every time the value inside the input field will change, right? So whenever you type something in, or in this case, since we are using input type number, you click on those two arrows. Basically, whenever the value of the input will change, right? this on change event will be triggered. So on change what we want to do is we want to pass the modified value or pass the new value to uh, the variable to the state variable so that is why we are using on change and then we are saying when the input is changed pass the e dot target dot value so e refers to the current event which is this on change event e dot target means the current input field the target of the event so on change was called on which element it was called on this input. So e dot target refers to the input field and then the value within the input field, the current value that was modified, the new updated modified value, take that value and we are passing that as a parameter to handle input change. Then inside handle input change, what we're doing is we are just taking the value that we have received and we're updating the input value like so. And so this is how we can do this. Right. Then coming to this creation of state. So this is how, again, this is a syntax. We can't do anything about it. This is the syntax. So this is how it works. We have to give two names. The first is the name of the variable. So that's counter. And the second thing is called set method and right? we call it set state. So basically the idea is whichever state value we have created over here, we have to modify that at some point. Otherwise there is no point of creating the state. If the data is going to be static, there is no point of creating this state, right? So the state needs to be dynamic and only this function can modify it. As you can see, this is a const value. It is a const value. It is not a normal JavaScript variable. It's a constant. So in the case of constant, we cannot really assign the value directly. If at any point of time you try to do counter equal to five, you will get an error over here. You can see counter is constant. And if you see the terminal at the bottom now, it says counter is constant. So this is not possible, right? So the only way to update the state value or the state variable is through this function, which we are creating set counter and then use state with the initial value zero. So this is the syntax of use state. We'll use this again when we go to the second example as well uh, for use effect, because even there we need a uh, variable storage. So we'll still use this again as well, right? And uh, okay, uh, Kiran, I've noted this. Let me check, right? I will uh, update the link over there. Okay, no problem. I'll try to check the link and update it after this session is done, right? Uh, okay, yes. So now coming to the, yes. So Venkat, I'm just coming to that. Use state is not used for API fetching. For API fetching, use another hook uh, called use effect. So that is what we are going to explore now. Okay, so the second hook that we're covering today is called a uh, use effect. And this hook is used for API calls to fetch data from an API, right? So remember, I told you about this one API, which was random user. So today, what we're going to do is we are going to create a mini application. Of course, I will not do the CSS bit, but what we want to do is you want to create an application which will fetch the details on click. So for example, you see this button here, get new user. So what we want to do is we want to create an application such that every time we click on this button, get new user, it will fetch new data. It will basically fetch new user data. 
data every time right so that is what we want to work with okay so this is why we are going to uh, you know basically use something called use effect so use effect is used to connect to external api calls and then we will uh, see how it will work right so let us go ahead and take a look at this now so i will keep the same application i will just create one more component over here let's call it user profile this will be again a js file and i will quickly create the component so first we'll import react then we'll write the function component code so this is user profile okay and then we will return simply empty just return a div for now let's just say open div and close div and let's just put h1 this is user profile just return this and i'm going to go to index and i will just replace app with the user profile so i will comment app out and instead i will add user profile so again when you check this application out on github right you should be able to see two components one is use state one one will be use effect you can see h1 shows up here this is user profile which we have just created okay now let us quickly set the html again like like we have seen in this this example uh, let me just quickly set this up right and for this again we can also use a bunch of different libraries let me also show you so one of the best packages that we have for something like this is called material ui okay so you can see material ui contains ready to use components that are for react you can see open source react component library so it's a very very good package and we have a bunch of different components as you can see here so if i go to dialog for example you will be able to see there are so many things for example see something like this right so this pop up code is already written for us this alert code is already written for us so all of these things are already written for us and we can use a bunch of these as well so these are all ready to use code pieces that are available to us within use uh, within material ui so this is something that you can try to use they also have something called a template store right, which are paid templates so you can see there are paid templates also available these are full fledged websites so again you can see these contain fully fledged websites as well right again i don't want to spend time on getting something you know uh, from here but what we want is we can use a similar component from here if you want we can just use something like a card let me see if i can find it yes card you can see here there is something called a card right? so this is the kind of a structure if you see uh, to our output right we have something similar it looks like a card so we can use this material ui component if we want to experiment with it you can see we have a better card here as well so this shows an image there is some content right media etc i think we'll use one of these cards uh, and we can try to work on this so how do we use this well first of all what we want to do is we want to import material ui or install material ui within our uh, application to do this we can go to the first screen getting started and then go to installation so this is the link you can see here npm install this is the command so we can just copy this command open the terminal for our project over here let me just stop the execution and just paste it so command v to paste it and again the package is called material ui okay material ui we have so many different options available material ui is one of them it is the most popular it is open source and it is created you know specifically for react right done so this is installed now what we need to do is we just have to copy the code from here so let's go back to that card screen okay right? and let's try to copy this one because here we have some buttons and all right? i think we'll copy um, the lizard one this is more user profile kind of a thing so let me just copy that one and again you can click on show code okay or you can directly click on copy the source once the source is copied let's go to user profile and paste it so paste it over here you can see it gives us a full fledged card right so let me just paste it and we can then see what the entire thing is so you can see it gives us all the imports as well so what we can do is replace the entire thing right and then we can just change the name back to user profile we'll go here and let me just put the export later like we typically do so export default user profile and done 
perfect now this is the code that we have received from material ui let's explore that first and then we can quickly make changes um, to it so if we check the output now we should be able to see that updated code you can see the whole lizard thing name paragraph all of those things show up over here right? so we get the component it is working fine for us but of course the image is not available we don't want it either we will want to get the image from our api so we'll just remove um i think the alt thing probably and then we'll also just remove all the other content so we don't want this lizard we don't want this one and these two buttons also we'll just change the content of them right so again we have received a structure as you can see a basic layout of the whole card now let's go to our api and i'll show you how to fetch the data so the api is random user dot me slash api this is our end point basically if we go to this url then you can see we can get uh we can get the actual data right so this is what we want and again we can use effect we can use use effect uh for this so first up we have to create a state variable right using use state to store the data so let's call it user data and then of course set user data and this will be equal to use state and then we'll say empty to begin with so to begin with we are giving it an empty data then we can say import we need three things here react use state and use effect so all hooks need to be in curly brackets this is how we import hooks right so this is something that we've already discussed then we'll run use effect so this use effect has a very specific syntax it looks something like this let me tell you why the syntax is a little complicated over here so first we have use effect and the way the use effect hooks works is every time we open the component every time the component renders on the screen use effect will be called once okay only once every time the component loads on the screen use effect is called once this has got nothing to do with the state update the state rendering happens through use state use effect will only call only be called once when the component loads for the first time right so basically this is where we would want to get the data and then store it in a local state so in this case we will store it in user data now what do we want inside use effect well here we have to use another package to connect to the api and that package is called axios okay the package is called axios so again, we are going to install that package. The command is npm install axios. We can also use the normal JavaScript fetch to get this done. But axios is a specially designed package just for this purpose. Right. So again, we have the package available now. We have just run npm install axios. So we can import it now. So import axios from axios. Okay. This is the input. Then to connect to the API, we have axios.get. This is the function that we will call to connect to the API. And then we have to pass the link to the API. So this is the URL, randomuser.me slash API. Okay, so this is the only line of code that we have to write to connect to the API. Once we connect to the API, we can specify what needs to be done then. So we can use something called dot then and then pass a fallback over here it's a response and then we can say for now let's just say console.log response.data okay so again let me just tell you what we have done here so far first up we have gotten this code you can just write a normal html code if you don't want this from material ui but material ui has some really nice packages and really nice looking components for free which we can use they are open source so there is no billing or payment issue there we can just use it without any problems. So we have taken this card from there. And then what we want to do is we want to connect to the API. So for that, we install this package called Axios. This package will help us connect to the API. Then we are creating a local state variable called user data. This is where we want to store the data coming from the API. Because again, at the end of the day, we want to display the user data itself. So we don't want to get it from API every time. We want to get it only once for which we use the use effect. So the use effect hook will be called only once the first time when the component is getting rendered in the initial render. 
right? We will call use effect. This will connect to the API using Axios dot get. This is the API endpoint where we are connecting. Then once it connects to the API, it will get the data, the response that is coming from the API. This will be displayed in the console. That's response dot data. Okay. Now let's check this out. So what we'll do is we'll right click inspect, go to our console. And you can see here, we get an object. This object contains something called results. Results will contain everything as you can see. So let me refresh. As soon as I reload the page, you can see that we do get the data over here in our console, as you can see, right? So this result contains something called results. And this is the actual data coming in from the API. So now what we want is we want to take this data from here and simply put it, you know, to user data. How can we do this? Can you tell me? We've already discussed how to work with use state. So what can we do? What piece of code can we write over here such that our state data gets updated? Set user data. Perfect. So what we can do is instead of putting this in the console, what we can say is we can say set user data. And then we can set this user data response dot data. So this response dot data will be set to user data. Okay. That's it. We don't have to do anything else. Set user data and pass the data. That's response dot data. Perfect. Now our user data is updated. The last step that we have to do is to take the values from user data and then put them in the actual screen on the actual screen, right? So for this, what we can do is we can just use the values from the data and then put them in. So this user data contains something called results. Within results, we have the first variable, the first index where all the values are. So if you just study the data here, you will see there is something called results results contains something called zero. Okay. So results is an array. The data is available at the index zero. So that is why we can say user data dot results of zero. This will give us access to this data from here. Then let's pick the image. Where is the image? Well, the image is available. Let's check inside picture. We have something called thumbnail. So we can probably use thumbnail or a medium. This is the image link. If you see, if I can just open this link in a browser tab, you can see the image link and the image will show up properly. So this is what we want. So within results of zero, we have dot picture dot medium. Let's specify that. So within the result zero, we have picture dot medium. Okay. This is the value that we are getting. And immediately once we save this, you can see the picture shows up on the screen. The picture shows up in our data, right? Now, of course, the size is different because I think it's coming from here. Let's remove the height. So it takes the full height as you can see. And on every refresh, it will also get updated right? on every refresh uh, whenever we basically reload our component, it will get updated. So that's fine. Uh, we'll just restart the application once and it should be fine. Right now, the next thing is just like we have read the picture, we can also quickly set everything else up. So for example, here I think was the name of the user. So here we can say user data of zero dot. Let's take the API data once again. So I think we have something called, uh, where is the name? Mm, here name right? within name, we have something called first title, first and last. So we can say dot name dot. We can then say plus. This is going to be a string. So then we can say plus dot first and then plus again another space and then dot last so this should now fetch the name of the person for us as well okay so that's the second thing and what i can do is i will simply quickly restart this once so that we can actually see the output on the screen as well uh, okay it says cannot read properties of undefined reading zero
okay let's see let's see why the error is and let's also just put this in the console just to check if the data is coming in the console or not so i'll just put comma console.log as well just to see if the it which is res not defined and So we have use effect within that we have axios and yes i think here we need to put this in curly brackets that should work Okay, interesting. Not really sure why this is giving us an error. But okay, let's quickly set this up first um, so that we don't uh, there is nothing wrong here. Yes, I think this should be this is image that's fine user data also zero okay let's just comment this one out for now just see if the rest of the data shows up so no the error is for all places where we're trying to read the user data so it's probably something wrong with our setup here and by default it's empty then we're connecting to the api then we are setting this up to response.data okay so yes the setup is fine as you can see here probably something went wrong over here uh, when you're trying to access the name so we probably accessed it in the wrong way. Let's check the console out so that we can see right, the data. So let me just print it in the console as well. So I'll just say console dot log. So you can see that there was no error. Actually, the data is still showing up in the console. I did not change any piece of code as well. Uh, let me just see what is there. So we have name within name. We have first, last and title. Let's try to access the first name, I guess, to begin with. So we can say user data dot results. So this will definitely still be there. And then dot name dot first. Let's see if this shows up. And uh, yes, I think that's where the problem is. And I think it stops working after that. So there's something, some issue with accessing this data. But again, the point is we are able to get the data like this, as you can see. So we're connecting to the API and we have the data available with us as well. We can use things like email ID and other stuff like that uh, to quickly just print this out on the screen. So we can say user data result zero dot email, for instance. And this should give us access to the email that is available, right? And uh, yeah. they actually try to print user data so we understand what is causing this problem. 
and yes you can see the user data is actually empty which means our set user data is not working as expected over here right and uh, let's just check this So yes, you can see the user data is not being set. That's our problem. And so we are probably passing the wrong value over here. Let's just pass in something like this. And now we can see a result, right? Results, it is not result, it is results of zero. And uh, okay, I think that was the problem. We were using results wherein a result wherein we should have used results over here. Let's check this out one more time. So we can say user data dot results of zero dot email. For example, let's see if this works. And again, uh, okay. Right. Okay. Let me go back to the image part. I guess that was working fine. Let me just. See, and then start again. Right, either way, so I guess this could also be an issue with the API because if we call this a lot of times, uh, in a lot of cases, the API also stops working for us. So this could also happen because of that, that we are trying to access the API a lot of times. That could also be causing this issue. Uh, so yes, we can always double check that. But either way, right, you can see that the image bit that we were working on earlier that was working fine we were able to get the images dynamically from the api right so this is how the use effect works we'll take another example of this later on as well and yes we'll also be connecting this to the database eventually right so when we discuss the backend after we create our database we will definitely be reading this from the api as well so that's also something that will you know um, come up uh, really soon uh, after we cover express so for that to work we have to first cover express and only then you know we can actually create database related stuff so only after we have a database can we actually create that database part so we'll start with the express soon but we need one more session on react uh, where we're going to build another you know another mini project by putting everything together so everything that we have learned so far we'll put it all together into one project and that is what we'll do in the next part, right? So again, in a lot of cases, what happens is if we connect to the API very frequently, the API also sometimes stops responding. That could also be the problem over here. Since I've refreshed it so many times, it could be that the API, um, you know, is not responding to me. Maybe it will work in your case, right? And yes, so like I said, we will be creating a database for this. We will be working on the database aspect as well. Uh, after we cover express so the database that we'll be exploring is called mongodb we'll discover that also and we'll connect it to the database also in the next few sessions right uh, regarding the update on the projects again so for people who are not there in the beginning of the session the team has given an update that the uh, abstracts and the team details have been shared with your college management directly. So your college authorities, your HOD or whoever is the concerned person, they have already received the abstracts from our team. And once they approve the abstracts, we'll allocate them to you. So we have sent them like a bunch of different abstracts. And as soon as they get approved, we'll be allocating them to you. So now we are waiting for the college authorities to respond. And as soon as the abstracts are approved, you will then be getting the team details. 
right? So that's the update in terms of the project. Again, whenever I get an update on this, I will let you know about that as well, right? Uh, so yes, that's the update on the project front. And yes, so today we have talked about two hooks. The first hook is called use state. And then the second hook is called use effect. We'll take another example of use effect in the next session. And again, we are trying to put together a restaurant menu application uh, in the next session. So again, I'll show you an output. It is basically an online restaurant menu kind of a thing. And yes, we'll work on sorting it. We'll work on filtering it. We'll work on fetching from the uh, API, all of those things in the next session as well. So we'll take an example of how to create that whole restaurant menu part uh, in the next session. And that will be the end of our discussion on React. Okay, then we'll move to Express. And finally, we will move to MongoDB, which will be our database. Okay, so the sessions are expected to finish by the end of this month, which means we have about seven, eight sessions left. So we'll be having one more session on React, about three sessions on Express, uh, two sessions on MongoDB, and then one or two sessions for the project. So we'll create an entire project by combining front end, back end, everything together. So that we'll do uh, in the last two sessions. Right. So yes, we are expecting the sessions to finish off by the end of this month. So hopefully the 29th of March, which is the last Friday of the month, uh, is when we have the last session. Right. So yes, you can also experiment with this. I will upload this code on GitHub as well once the session is done. And yes, before we again wrap up, there are a couple of quick questions for you. So I'll put them on the screen. Take a minute, read them and answer them in the chat. So yes, I think there is a confusion here. You have not received any project from the college. That is exactly correct. We have sent it to the college for approval. So once the college approves it, then it will be given to you. Okay. So instead of you submitting abstracts to the college, we have directly submitted them to the college. Once the college approves the abstracts, then they will be shared with you. Right. Perfect. So yes, the correct answer here is option number one, right? So we use use state. So we use use state to create a new state variable like we have just seen. Perfect. Here is the second question. Right. So the correct answer here is option three, right? Not option one or two. Like I told you, it will render only once, right? The use effect will run only once on the initial render. So that is basically uh, option three. This is the correct option, right? And then uh, here is the next question for you. Perfect. So the uh, correct answer to this one is option three. Uh, sorry, hold on. Not, not three. Uh, yes, it is option two. Use effect. And use effect is the correct answer. This is the hook that is used for asynchronous operations like we have just seen. Right. And uh, yes, so that's that's all. Those are all the questions for today. Let me also head over to the topic slide. This is the topic for the day. Uh, it's called react hooks. Right. So for people who are asking today's class name, it is React Hooks, right? And yes, as soon as the session is done, I will update this code in the, uh, you know, GitHub repository also, which is this link. Okay. So this is your link uh, for everything. Again, all the assignments are over there. And again, for people who have submitted the assignments, please note that you will get zero out of hundred because it is a manual review. So the system by default will give you zero because there is no grading pattern over there. 
since it is custom code, it is going to be reviewed manually. Okay. So it's fine. If you receive a zero score, that is not the actual score. Okay. So yes, I just wanted to clarify that as well. And uh, yes, that's basically it for the day. The feedback link has been shared in the chats for all zoom as well as YouTube. So please make sure you fill the feedback link before you uh, leave the session. And um, yes, uh, we will do that, Rahul. We will retrieve database data with JavaScript very soon. Uh, in the next three, four sessions, we'll reach there, right? But yes, that is it for this one. Thank you so much for attending. Uh, let's connect on Wednesday, same time, and continue our discussion on React. So yes, have a great day. Um, see you guys on Wednesday. Bye-bye.